Hello everybody and welcome back to the Logical Engineering Channel. I'm your host Tyler and welcome to part two of my home lab setup. Uh, this video will go a lot more in depth on everything and um, yeah, uh, part one should be up in the right hand corner right about now. Um, and uh, if you're new to servers and uh, home labs, then I would suggest that you watch that video first. So yeah, with that, let's get right into the video. Alright, so starting out from the top to the bottom, we have the KVM. I'm not going to pull this fully out because I only have one hand free, but I mean this thing basically pulls out and allows me to switch video signals between all the different servers. It is a Altison KL1508AM. Uh, this thing is amazing and I got it at a surplus store. It seems to work just fine for me. Below that, uh, over here, uh, I am trying to get a firewall. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on any security appliances that I should get, I've been looking into some fireboxes. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions on any security appliances that um, are pretty cheap used on eBay, uh, just comment down below. Uh, below that, we have my Netgear 10100 PoE switch, which um, gives network to all the servers, um, and that is a Netgear FS728TP switch, and this thing is pretty expensive online. I was able to get it at Goodwill for about $20, and this thing has never failed me. Uh, so far, it works just fine. Okay, below that, just a regular cable manager. Um, just to make everything look really nice. Below that, we have a PDU. It is a, um, I'm going to try to pronounce it. It is a Geist uh, SP104-10 PDU. This thing works just fine. has surge protector, and it also has a little breaker in it. Um, so, yeah. Below that, we have all of my servers. Um, these are... HP DL380 Gen 6 servers. They have dual Intel Xeons in them. The model number of the Xeons are E5540 and they're clocked at 2.53 gigahertz. Each server has 16 gigabytes of RAM and all of the drive bays are populated with 146 gigabyte SAS drives. All right, and below the servers, we have my UPS. This thing is amazing. It is a PowerWare 9125. It is a 2000 VA UPS. It has four batteries and a network connect ups card in the back. Um, I will display the model number for the connect ups card uh, in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, I got this from a surplus store actually for free. Apparently these things go for insane prices online, but I got the actual UPS for free at a surplus store and all I had to do was just populate it with batteries. So far this thing has worked amazing. Uh, the way that it works is basically when it, um, when it senses that there's no power, um, it sends a shutdown signal via the network um, to all the servers if they're on and then um, I have set a uh, time uh, for it to wait for the servers to shut down, and then once all the servers have shut down, then the UPS shuts down so that we're not having this running, because this thing will run for about an hour if nothing's drawing power from it, probably, or longer, um, because that switch will still be drawing power from it. So yeah, um, that's basically everything that's in the server rack, and now I'm going to give you a tour around the other stuff. So I get a lot of questions about what I actually do with my home lab. Uh, and just so that I'm not spending a ton of time answering comments in uh, the comments section below, um, I'm just going to tell you what all I do with it. So server 1 is a Linux server. It is uh, running uh, CentOS. And that's where I basically mess around with all Linux stuff, really anything that comes to mind. Um, server number two is my Windows server. Um, it is running Windows Server 2016, and that's where I do all my virtualization stuff. Um, that's also where I just generally do um, a lot of more enterprise-grade uh, stuff and learning how all that software works in case I do want to go into 
uh, like a sysadmin career or something like that. And then below there, this server, uh, I haven't really used it much. Um, I am trying to get it ready for uh, a client um, to use so that I can start making a little bit of money off of this since I only need really two servers. But when I was getting it ready, uh, this drive decided that it wanted to die. Um, so yeah, that's sort of been halted. But uh, so server number three will, will be running CentOS on it and that won't really be my problem once I uh, get a new drive in it. All right, so around the back, um, sorry that you don't really have a good view over here. I just have a 25 millimeter lens, so it's really hard getting good angles back here, but I'm just gonna try to point out everything for you. So over here, these are not ethernet. This is actually um, cables for the KVM. And these go to little adapters uh, around over there that then uh, turn it into VGA and uh, USB. Um, so over here we have all of the power, um, and then as you can see, we have lots of networks, lots of network cables. Um, each server has four network cables going to it. I know that's a little overkill. Um, one, it's nice to have multiple cables. Um, for redundancy uh, and also uh, for virtual machines because you need to have virtual switches. Um, and then the loose cables that are different colors like this yellow one and then this blue one are going to the ILO. I just recently configured the ILO so um, yeah that's where that's going to. Eventually once I can get some permanent ethernet cables uh, those will be tied down too and hopefully all the servers will have um, their ILO. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the back of the rack. Um, I didn't know how to put extra slack on the cables to um, make it so I could pull the servers out uh, and uh, still have everything plugged in. But it's not really a problem because I don't really pull out the servers a lot. But it is sort of um, a bit annoying when I'm trying to maintenance them or when I'm just taking a look at uh, the insides of them for like cleaning and stuff like that but yeah and then for the network um, we have a CenturyLink connection it's 100 megabits so it's pretty good for what I'm doing in my opinion it's fast enough it's not gigabit but it's still good um, and then we have a UPS by our network equipment uh, because the main power where UPS does run off the network so if the power goes out and your network's down I don't exactly know uh, how the UPS is going to connect to the servers. So we have to have another UPS that's just a dumb UPS, it's consumer grade. I think it's like a thousand VA, I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically our network. And then we just have a uh, ethernet cable running uh, on the side of the house um, to get ethernet over here because the house sadly is not wired with ethernet. The server rack, I forget how much kilowatt hours it actually pulls a month, um, but by my calculations, um, for one month with one server on, it would cost about like $50, which is a lot. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't remember exactly how much kilowatt hours that is, uh, but I do have a sheet with that. Um, so definitely if you're going to build your own, uh, do research on the local area that you're in for uh, how much it costs for power because that sort of caught me off guard. Alright, so that concludes the video for today. Uh, if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing. As always, there will be more information in the description and also a link to my website which has more videos um, and also extra information. Um, so yeah, uh, again, please consider subscribing and thanks so much for watching the video.